In this lesson, we're going to be learning about translations. And to begin with, we're going to have a front load of information on vocabulary for translations specifically and transformations in general. First, a transformation is a change to a geometric figure that results in a change in position, shape, or size. And through this unit, we're going to look at each of these in turn. Now, when we talk about transformations, we talk about two different figures in that process. The first is the pre-image, which is simply the original figure of the transformation. The other is the image, which is the resulting figure from a transformation. At the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a couple of sets of transformations that have occurred. And in each one, we have the image in blue and the pre-image in black. So that means we start with this figure in black on the left in either case, and through some sort of transformation, we end up with the figure on the right in blue. So you can see in the, with the squares, we have a change of size, and with the kites, we have a change in orientation or position. Now, each of these can be described in terms of a rigid motion. A rigid motion is a transformation that preserves distance and angle measures. You can see in both of these figures that the angle measurements have been preserved, but only in the kites do we end up with the distances also being preserved. So with the kites this is a rigid motion transformation. With the squares, it is not because the distances were not kept the same. Now, specifically in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at a type of transformation called a translation. A translation is a transformation that maps all points of a figure the same distance in the same direction. Basically, you're just moving it around whatever field you have to work with. So, let's take a look a little bit more at translations specifically. In the diagram, triangle NID is translated into or transformed into triangle SUP. And what we want to do is go through and take a look at from the image, uh, pre-image and image, what each of the corresponding parts are. So let's begin this by looking at angles. Our angles are put into this uh, into the naming the same as with congruent systems. Corresponding locations give corresponding items in the pre-image and image. So we can say that angle N is congruent to angle S because they're in the same location. Likewise, angle I is congruent to angle U, and angle D is congruent to angle P. And with the transformations, these angles are going to be congruent, but a lot of times what we'll say instead is that angle N is the pre-image of angle S, or that angle S is the image of angle N, and you match them up accordingly. Next, let's talk about sides. What do we know about corresponding sides? What pairs exist in here? Well, SU corresponds to NI, both by the naming, where they're located in the names, NI is the first two and SU is the first two. Also, by simple location. SU is located on the left, NI is as well. So what other corresponding sides exist in between this pre-image and image? Well, if we have SU and NI, next would be UP and ID, and last would be PS and DN. So we can go through and name corresponding parts the same as we did with our similarity and correspondence uh, congruence 
systems that we had previously. So once we get into being able to identify the corresponding parts, what else can be done in the way of translations? Well, just like with other parts of geometry, each of these has their own notation and way of writing. So we're going to translate the figure that is shown, triangle ABC, one unit right and four units down. And there's a couple ways of writing this. The first is going to be that we're going to take our values as written coordinates, so we have x, y, and what we're going to do is we're going to say x, right is positive, so we'll go x plus 1, and down is negative, so we'll go y minus 4. This is one way of writing this transformation. Another, because we're working with translations, is we can say t, put a brace and say 1 comma negative 4. Because we're working with items in two dimensions, the first item that is listed is meant to correspond with the x and the second is meant to correspond with the y. And then from here we tell what we are doing this translation of. T stands for translation. So we're going to do this of A, B, C. And when we do it, what we're going to come out with is what is called A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, the prime markers indicate that a transformation of some sort has occurred. And if we were then to go through and do a second transformation of some sort, we would add another prime, making A double prime B double prime and C double prime. But first, what would this image look like if we go through this transformation? Well, we start with our coordinates. So let's look at coordinate A, which is at negative 2, 2. If we put it through the transformation, what we're going to come out with is A prime, which has been moved right 1, giving it a coordinate of negative 1 for the x, and down 4, which is negative 2. That would place it right here on our graph, and we would call this A prime. Next, let's take a look at B. B starts out at the coordinate 1, 1, and going through this transformation is going to leave us with B prime, which is going to be at location 2, negative 3. And graphing that and labeling it puts us with B prime. Last, as we look at C, which is located at 0, negative 1, what we're going to end up with through this transformation is C prime, which will be located at 1, negative 5. And that would put it right here on the graph. And then connecting it to make the triangle gives us our triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. So quite a bit of notation in here being able to write it as such with adding in to individual coordinates or to do this translation with the T and then the submarkers talking about how the movement is and remembering that our image comes out with the primes saying that we've done some sort of transformation to it. Now doing transformations like this is often good and useful, but occasionally we come across multiple translations or transformations at once. When we talk about composing transformations, what this means is that we have two or more transformations that happen on the same pre-image in a sequence. So if you're playing sports, good example for this, and you are located at one spot, and you need to get the ball or whatever you're playing with to a teammate out at another location. You have an option of sending it directly. That would be a translation. But if there's an opponent in the way, sending it the ball that direction would become a problem. So a lot of times what you'll do is you can pass to one of your teammates 
somewhere else, send it to them, who then passes along to another. This would be a composition of two translations in order to get the same location. So we can either do a single item translation or a double translation which would result in the same end location. So composition is simply looking at how can we do this in more than one step. So take a look over the information that's in this lesson. Make sure you have all this vocabulary down and the new notation that we're learning and be ready to use it.